All right, day one of our three-day program. If you're here and on your mat, well done. That's the first part and often the hardest one. And a few things I want you to remember before we start this practice. Number one, have fun and smile. It's just yoga. And number two, I'm gonna give different variations in some of the postures. So if you're a beginner, stay with the foundational poses. If you are a little bit more experienced in your practice, I will give you the opportunity to take your practice a little bit deeper at times. So get ready and let's go. Okay, so we're gonna start our practice in a standing posture. So come to the front of the mat, let your feet be directly underneath your hips, find a comfortable position, and just allow yourself to close your eyes for a minute. Feel your feet grounding down into the floor. And start to drop your shoulders down away from your ears. You might even shrug the shoulders really tight up next to your ears and then roll them back and down to open the chest a little bit more. We often tend to have that rounded posture from sitting at our computers all day for those of us that sit at desks. So pull the shoulders back, drop the shoulders down, and draw the neck and the chin slightly in. And then don't worry too much about how you're standing, just feel yourself standing here. Starting this three-day program, smile a little bit, give yourself credit for showing up. And just start to connect to your body and the space in which you're standing. You'll notice your mind is gonna dart left and right thinking of various things. That's totally normal, bring it back here. And just focus on your body, your feet in contact with the floor and your shoulders nice and open and down. And I want you to feel really solid in your feet, really solid in the foundation of your practice. The feet are the foundation of our practice. Pressing them down into the mat, lift the crown of your head a little bit higher. You're strong and you're ready. You're here. Good, then inhale, reach your arms out and up overhead. And interlace your fingers, press the palms up to face the ceiling, draw the navel back, lengthen your tailbone down and just breathe. You can gently open the eyes, gazing down somewhere at the floor in front of you. The important thing here is to just draw the elbows back towards your ears. Good, and then release that. Bring the hands, interlace them behind your back. Yoga mudra. The shoulder blades draw back together, the heart lifts forward. Let your head go slightly up to open your throat and then bring it back to center. Again, your gaze is steady somewhere down on the floor. And then release as you inhale, let the arms draw out and up overhead, maybe gaze up towards your hands. Then exhale, fold down. Your first fold of the practice, your hamstrings are gonna say hello. So just start to bend your right and your left knee. If this is really hard for you, feel free just to come up to an L position. As long as you feel a stretch and a lengthening in the back of your legs, you're doing this posture right. And then come back to your breathing. You're gonna hear me again and again, draw you back to the breath. The breath becomes the anchor for the mind in our practice. So allowing the back of your legs to lengthen, really shake that head maybe side to side, letting the neck release. Good, and then inhale, lift your heart and your chest up parallel to the ground, and exhale, fold down. We'll do that two more times. Inhale, hands to the shin, and your chest lifts, and exhale, press down with your feet as you relax the crown of the head towards the floor. One more, inhale up. And exhale, release down. 
Good, from here, take your hands, place them on the floor. Step both feet back, and you're gonna lower down onto your knees. You're gonna have your hands directly underneath your shoulders, your knees directly underneath your hips. Now we're gonna start just to open the spine with the breath. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the chin, and exhale, press into your hands, round, really feeling the shoulders pressing up. Pull the navel in, inhale, cat lift position. And exhale, cat tuck, rounding the spine, pressing down with the hands, lifting up through the back of the heart. Good, one more inhale, cat lift. And exhale, sit back onto your heels, find a child's pose. This is an active child's pose, so I want you to reach your hands forward, your elbows stay off of the floor, and your head goes down. And just breathe here for two or three long, deep, slow breaths. Good, coming back up to hands and knees. Again, find that nice centered position and then draw your right foot back behind you. Flex your right foot, your right hip drops down, the back of your neck stays long, so your gaze is down between your hands and really reach through that right leg. I want you to feel like you're pressing into the wall behind you. Your belly and your navel draws in and slightly up. And again, breathe. I want you to feel really strong here. Press out of your wrists and up into the strength of your shoulders. Inhale, and then exhale, take your right foot between your hands. If it doesn't get there, guide it forward so that your knee is directly in line with your ankle. Good, from here, bring your hands up to the front knee and really let your hips sink down. Good, inhale, reach your arms up. And exhale, come forward and just let the hands kind of reach back behind you. Inhale, reach up. And exhale, lower down. One more inhale. And exhale, interlace the fingers behind your back. Draw the shoulder blades together. Again, really opening the front of the chest. Sink your hips a little farther forward and then release the hands, keeping the shoulders and the chest open, reaching up. Good. Now, if you're a beginner, stay here. If you want a little bit more of a punch in your practice, press into the top of your back foot and lift the back knee off of the mat just about an inch or so. Breathe. And release down if you're in the lift and take the hands down next to the foot. Inhale and exhale. Step that right foot back and then press all the way back into a downward facing dog. So this is the first downward facing dog of the practice. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Lift the hips and press the heels down and just begin to bend your right and your left knee. It's allowing a little bit of fluidity and opening in the posture. Now again, try not to dump your weight into your wrists. Pull up and back into your shoulders and through the lift of your hips. Good, slowly walk your feet forward. If straight legs if you can, if not, just bend the knees to get there into a standing forward fold. Grab onto your elbows and let your head release down. Good, inhale, come halfway up. And exhale, release the head towards the floor. Inhale, draw your arms out. Come halfway and pause. And exhale, fold. Good, step that left foot back into a lunge. This time, keeping the back knee lifted, bring your hands up, breathe in. Same thing we did with the back knee grounded. Sweep the hands down and back, in inhale. And exhale, come back up. Good, sweep the hands down and back. Inhale, rise up. One more, down and back with the hands. All the way up. Good, interlace the fingers behind your back. Open the heart in front of the chest. Strong in your legs and then lift your hands up. Breathe. Good, crescent pose. Good, hands to the mat, inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good. Now, from downward facing dog, you're gonna come forward into a plank position. You're gonna hold here. 
If you need to, I want you to drop your knees to the floor to support your body. Otherwise, holding here, this is the part of the practice where I know I win a lot of fans. You love me for this part of the practice. So smile and breathe. Good, and then drop the knees to the floor, everyone, and lower all the way down onto your belly. And your elbows stay hugged tight in next to your ribs. Good. Inhale, lift the heart and the chest off the floor, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. And breathe. Again, this is the pose where we kind of gather the energy and the breath back into the consciousness of our practice. And then just using the breath to come back to the body and come back to this practice. Walking your feet forward again. If you can, straight legs. If not, bend your knees. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, half lift, arms out to the side, flat back. Exhale, fold. And step that right foot back into a lunge. Good, high lunge here. Lift your heart, lift your hands, breathe. And exhale, sweep the hands down and back. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, sweep down and back. Inhale, rise up. And exhale one more time. Rising up with the breath. Good. Interlace the fingers behind your back. Heart opens. Keep the heart lifted. Lift the hands. Crescent pose. Breathe. Hands to the mat. Inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, favorite pose again, plank. Breathe one breath in and out. Good, drop your knees to the floor and exhale, lower all the way down onto your body. Inhale, lift the chest, cobra pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Again, finding your breath. Drawing the mind back into this moment through your breathing. Good, lift your right leg up and back behind you. And then on your exhale, bring it forward between your hands. This time, drop your back heel down and bring your hands all the way up onto your hips. Good, warrior two, gaze down. Make sure you can see the big toe on the inside of your right knee and then lift your right hand, lift your left hand, and breathe. Find a strength in your practice. Feel your feet underneath you. Inhale, and exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, inhale, lift your left leg out and up behind you. And exhale, bring that foot forward between your hands. Again, if it doesn't get there, take your ankle, guide it forward. Bring your right heel to the floor and bring your hands up to your hips. Good, gaze down. Make sure you can see the big toe on the inside of your left knee. Press the weight strong into your right foot. Lift your left arm. Lift your right arm parallel to your left, warrior two. A really strong and grounding pose. Let your gaze be right over your left middle finger. Find your breath. Good. Inhale here and exhale, windmill the hands all the way down. Step back to downward facing dog. Good. Inhale forward to plank position. Straight line with your body. Exhale, knees to the floor, lower all the way to the belly. Inhale. Rising up, elbows pull in towards the ribs, and exhale, downward facing dog. Good, inhale that right leg out and up, and exhale, bring it forward between your hands. Drop the back knee, inhale, lift up. Exhale, sweep the floor down. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, bring the hands next to the foot. Turn your back toe under and lift the back leg up. Inhale, rise up to crescent. 
Exhale, sweep down and forward. Inhale, rise up. Good, open up to warrior two. Finding the strength in the posture again here. Shoulders drop down. Gaze is steady. Inhale. Exhale, windmill the hands down, downward facing up. Forward to plank as you inhale. Lower down all the way as you exhale. Inhale, rise all the way up, cobra. And exhale, flip the toes, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Left leg out and up behind you. Exhale, foot comes forward, drop the back knee down, point the toes, lift up. Exhale, sweep the floor down. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, hands to the floor, turn the back toes under, lift the back knee, inhale, lift up, crescent pose. Exhale, sweep down. Rise up as you inhale. And exhale, warrior two. Breathe. Maybe even smile a little bit here. Good, and then dropping all the way down, downward facing dog. Come forward as you inhale. You're again, holding plank, drawing your belly in. If you need to, drop your knees, support yourself. Yoga is never about pushing past your limits. Know where you need to be and stay there until the body tells you you're ready to move on. Good, drop the knees, lower all the way to your belly. Bring the hands out to the side. For a moment, turn your right ear down on the floor. Lift up, left ear to the floor. Head to center. And then I want you to lift your arms and your feet in one line. Your legs are together like a single unit and lift everything up off the floor. And then bring the hands next to your legs, lift up a little higher. And exhale, lower the right ear. And relax. In between postures, don't let yourself fully go. Don't check out of your practice but also allow yourself to release, to have a moment to restore the energy of the body to prepare you for the next posture. Good, head back to center, interlace your fingers. And again, everything lifts up. This time your hands are interlaced back behind you as you lift. And breathe, nice strong breath here. Inhale, lift and exhale. Left ear to the floor. Letting go just enough, but staying present with your practice. Yoga is an art of coming to know the various levels of our being, our tendencies. So if you have a tendency to push really hard, Maybe try to back off a little bit. And if you have a tendency not to push hard enough, maybe take yourself a little bit further. We're gonna do that one more time. Interlace your fingers, draw the elbows together and straight. Lift the heart, shoulder blades draw together and your feet lift. You breathe. Inhale, lift. And exhale, bring your hands right underneath your shoulders. Come all the way up onto your elbows. Your elbows underneath your shoulders, coming into Sphinx Pose. So there's a tendency to collapse down into this posture. I want you to reverse that. So press down into your forearms. This is not a resting pose, but it's an active resting pose. So you press down into the forearms to lift your heart open and forward. Your shoulder blades draw together, slightly down your back and your legs are nice and active. So holding a gentle back bend here. 
Again, if you find a spot in front of you to gaze at during this practice, during each of the postures, it helps to anchor and steady your mind. So if you find your mind wandering, come back to a spot on the floor or on the wall in front of you and just hold your gaze nice and steady and see what happens. One more breath. Good, and then dropping down onto your belly again, chest down, hands underneath your shoulders, inhale a little deeper into a back bend, cobra pose, and then exhale, flip your toes, last downward facing dog. So again, allowing your low back, this should feel really good in your low back now after those back bends. And so spreading your fingers, feeling the foundation of the posture, you reach down into the hands, so rip, lift up through the shoulders and through your hips. Heels are reaching towards the floor. Now your heels are a little bit wider than your toes. Good, and then slowly come down onto your knees. Your knees are wide, your toes are touching, and you're gonna sit down into child's pose. This time, it's a resting child's pose. Bringing the forehead to the floor, and letting your arms relax down into the mat, and really letting your low back release and lengthen. Good, and then slowly walk your hands back up and bring your knees together, sitting back onto your heels. For a moment, just bring your hands down into your lap, and then bring your hands to your chest. Anjali Mudra, hands and heart center. And take a moment here to connect with the effort that you've made to show up for this program almost, almost completed the first practice. We're not there quite yet. But every time we show up to the mat, something happens. That's all that matters. We don't judge whether it's good or bad. Something happens, something shifts. See if you can feel that. And then slowly, Come forward and just bring your feet underneath you and rock to a seated position so your feet come out in front of you. And you're gonna bring your right foot in front of your left foot here. So just ending by opening into the hips. So inhale, gently lift your arms. Again, moving into a little bit of a softer phase of our practice. So you're gonna fold forward. Not worrying about how deep you go in this posture just as long as you feel a release in your right hip, an opening through the hips, the tailbone, you're doing it right. Finding that place where any more is too much and any less is not enough. There's a really yummy spot right in the middle. Try to find that place and then breathe deeply into your right hip. Maybe let your head kind of release and melt down towards the floor. Good, slowly coming back up and switching your feet. Your left foot is in front of your right. You're gonna inhale and gently reach your arms up and exhale, kind of lengthen the spine as you lower down into your stretch. Again, when I first started practicing yoga, I think I was able to lower it till about here, if that. So over time, your body will open from within to allow you deeper into the stretch. We don't force the body anywhere past exactly where it is. We be with where we are and we allow the pose to slowly deepen through a gradual opening. So slowly come back up and bring your knees together. 
your legs straight and begin to maybe shift your weight right and left to bring the weight nice and grounded down into your tailbone. So we started the practice by grounding down into the feet. Now we're gonna ground down into the base of the spine to create length and space as we lift. So inhale here and lift the crown of the head up to the ceiling. And then exhale, just slowly walk your hands forward. As you fold, try not to round too much into your spine. Instead, think about there's a string from your heart to your toes that's pulling you slowly further into the stretch. Again, finding that place where any more is too much and any less is not enough. And take two or three breaths. If you're deep into the stretch, you can take hold of the outsides of your feet and gently guide yourself a little bit deeper into the posture. Otherwise, simply holding wherever you are. Self-love and self-acceptance. In yoga, we don't have to strive. We don't have to be anywhere other than right where we are. Breathe. And slowly come all the way back up. You're gonna shift your weight a little bit forward and you're gonna come down laying on your back for the final posture of Shavasana. So go ahead and let yourself lay down on the mat. And we give you a few adjustments in your body. So let your hips really release, your legs turn out, your feet are relaxed, your hands are a little bit up away from your body to give yourself a little bit of space. The palms of your hands are open but relaxed. Your belly is breathing freely and fully. Back of the neck, long. Relaxing your jaw. Relaxing the muscles behind your eyes. This final part of our practice, Shavasana, or corpse pose is a resting posture where we begin on a physical, energetic, and emotional level to integrate the benefits of our practice. So you can stay here for as long as you like as long as your day or evening permits. But at least stay here for one or two minutes. So as you continue to rest and integrate your practice, good job, day one. One third of the way complete. I will see you tomorrow. Namaste.